The biggest and most expensive house in the world. Nobody's ever been allowed to release a tour of the property. What the? F oh, it's this guy, producer Michael. He's a f weirdo. It is called the One, and what gets better than that? We are with the One, the one and only Niall, who is the visionary behind this. He built the visionary this, dude, and he is just. Uh, an incredible guy, and he's going to show thank us you, around you. this house. Come on! I already know so this is going to be a, bad. It's like a moat that goes around Stone door that that opens into itself. Check that out. Electric stone front door. Biometric. We have the latest technology in the house. Whoa! Guys, yeah. I have never been in this house before. This is the first time walking through the door. Adam has never been in this house before, and. Why does this dude have red hair? Again, opulence. This is a video that will show you that capitalism, once again, breeds innovation. Wow. Let me show you over here. So we have um, a two- I feel like this guy- <laughs> First I was gonna be like, why is he yelling? And then I realized like, oh shit, it's because the house is massive, dude. Look at the height of this. I I'm six foot two. How high are these? <laughs> he said the house can sense poor people and will automatically eject them. Yeah, it just immediately subjugates uh, the poor into a lifetime of slavery. You walk in and they're like, oh, come on. The house designates you as butler. It has biometrics for that. I just don't get it. It's like not inviting or welcoming at I all. You literally, it looks like a super villain lair. Motherfuckers are literally living in their doo-doo down the street. Like there's just homeless people everywhere in Los Angeles. This guy... Built a $500 million mansion, dude. Absolutely insanity, dude. This is like, it's just, there's no utility. Spectacular. So let me show you and talk to you. This is going this. to be a first. I never walk on grass. This is real grass and I'm going to walk on it. Why, are you scared of grass? No, I don't want to get dirt into the beautiful oh, white don't worry. floors. There you go. How about that? Look, I'm Ooh. on the grass, guys. This is a this, this is, is a, a video full of firsts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck says I never walk on grass, dude? In Murano, Italy, and I was in Murano a long time ago. And if you've been in Murano, Italy, there's a sphere in the middle of the town that's done by this same artist. And this artist was nice enough to make this for us, and and because they wanted to be involved in the one, but it's turned into something so much more because my ex-wife. Yo, why is it that rich people art is so ugly? Like, I I'm sorry, dude. It's just like rich people art is always so doo doo. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, wait, did he say ex wife? My ex wife, I I'm just getting divorced. Unfortunately, it was a whirlwind relationship. I met her during COVID and it, it didn't work out, but maybe it will still at the end. I don't know, but this is a cherry. <laughs> this video was awesome, dude. What the fuck? Why did he just drop that in the middle of the video? <laughs> Oh no, this video is sick. Okay, this is the greatest video of all time. I thought we were just gonna watch some fucking janky ass, really expensive house. I didn't realize that there was like, that there was a backstory here. Oh my God. ...that we have called Wings of Angels, and this is gonna help children in third world countries through the arts, because she is a, a well-known actress and singer in Argentina, and she, she came from a very tough life in Cordoba, and she wants to be part of the solution of changing the world. And one of the ways we're gonna do this here is through this charity, uh, Wings of Angels. And it's going to build housing and schools for third world country <laughs> children to learn through acting and through singing. That's <laughs> <laughs> He's like crying. This is like a bit, like it, they, someone could not have written this to be this funny. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna teach like acting to kids in Africa. If they want, you know, clean water wells, well, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna teach them acting. So, you know, and, and how are we doing that? Well, by, you know, giving them Murano glass. Yeah, I've decided we're gonna give the kids in Nigeria some Murano grass, uh, glass, you know, it's uh, pretty good. And that will motivate them to uh, start learning how to act. And, uh, you know, they won't act like they're poor anymore. And therefore, you know, cause poverty's a mindset. I worked with the furniture company, but you know, I picked like, all of this was all okay I don't, I don't get it like how does this guy become this guy i need more backstory like how do you become the guy nile niami's infamous mega mansion the one foreclosure looms okay the reason why there is a problem with foreclosure for this is that 
Oh my God, he borrowed $82 million and the debt is ballooned to more than 110 million and Hanky wants his money. Oh no, dude. Hanky wants its money. Oh, this guy's life is ruined, dude. All right, let's bail him out, boys. I'll buy this. I Don't like worry. Cake. I got it. Here, just keep subscribing and I'm going to go buy this house, okay? Thanks. You know, I'm, I'm a big developer. I, I have built a lot of houses, no houses like this, but I've learned over time that we really need to start sustaining and trying to do things where we don't just waste. Um, so this is one thing that, that we found. All of my flowers. Bro, you literally built a $500 million mansion, dude. What do you mean? There's an elevator in the mansion. What do you mean sustaining? Flowers are artificial, but you could never tell. Right. I, yeah. I thought they were real. Yep. And, and, I, I really and, and, and it's good real. because it's a bigger cost at first, but then you don't they need to feel real. You don't need to worry about them staining and dropping and you don't need to worry about what, what is that? What is sustainable about that? My dude, that's not sustainability. Bro, he's like, hey, yeah, you know, instead of having like actual, you know, actual flowers in here, you know, we decided to get like, uh, you know, plastic ones, dude, which is, of course, what green energy is about. <laughs> this is so good. Sustainability spectacular i feel so poor watching this and i live in socal why motherfucker I, I i live in like a regular apartment and i drive a camry and i'm significantly happier than both of these people okay it has absolutely nothing to do with opulence you should never ever in a million years feel bad because some other people have nicer shit than you okay as long as you are able to survive that's the most important part as long as you can be happy and survive that is the key that's the most important fucking thing this stuff is like this is so sad. This sh demonstration of wealth is for weak-minded people to feel bad about. Also, this dude is literally poorer than all of you. He's in $100 million in debt, so. Niall, how does it feel to sit here now, now that it's almost complete? Honestly? Yeah. Can you cuss? Sure, we'll we, can, we can bleep it. <laughs> um, exhausting. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. I mean, yeah. like, really? really the most exhausting that you could ever imagine so i'm gonna i've never seen such tremendous sadness behind 700 dollars rose tinted shades before this dude has like the aura of a broken man he tries to mask it with uh you know john varvado's t-shirts that are skin tight and expensive jewelry but the sadness seeps out through every orifice it's like the pheromones that you can sense from the other side of the screen it is really really bad but the only thing keeping me going is I have a girl coming in tomorrow. So that's making me happy. <laughs> what? Oh, that's so sad. Why would you say that on camera, dude? Oh, God, that's so whack, dude. What the fuck? Uh, oh, I have a girl coming in tomorrow that's going to make me happy. Hold on, hold on. This is, this is a, a, a kitchen that no one will ever use. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, you can't not show this stuff. Look, look at this. Uh, that's the pantry. Oh yeah, this is, this is a pantry that no, one, no one's ever going to use. <laughs> Dude, why are they like, like, it's so unnecessarily large that it's a flex that it's that fucking large. There is no utility to this. Motherfuckers be like, we are no longer living under feudalism. We are no longer living in like a monarchy. You have this massive castle that have been given to people basically because they deserve to have that castle and that power because God chose them okay god chose them to be the fucking king and and that royal lineage that blood is now pure and everyone needs to have it and then explain intergenerational wealth under capitalism these are the fucking actual castles and the only difference is like instead of god ordaining uh whatever the fucking king is now you just have meritocracy and uh hard work that allowed you to reach this level of wealth it makes no sense that this is like it's just like making me angry how big it is. One of the five swimming pools? Yeah, there's seven total swimming pool water features total. Seven? This is the main pool. It has an infinity on three sides. And everything in this house is your creation, your ideas. Well, Paul McLean was the architect, but everything in this house was generally all of my ideas. So like this guy goes to like he goes to banks and he says, give me a hundred million dollars. And then he goes to a fucking architect and he says, I have a bunch of like insane ideas. And then he gets the architect to just like follow through on his insane ideas. Like it makes no sense. Like why is anybody a part of this scheme? Imagine being a worker getting paid $20 an hour to build this shit. Brother, you, what do you mean $20 an hour, dude? I know. And unfortunately in LA, I know 
a lot of the dudes are scumbags here, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to turn all the dudes into good people. How so are you going to do that? One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to set them on their feet. So check out what I did here. So this is a his and her bath, right? This is the community bath. So this is the her side. This is the toilets, and this is the sinks. And see these, these. But why are there no doors in the toilet? Uh, plates right here. That's for a monitor, right? And then if you come into the his side. Happy. Can you believe these this? are no. the these are the urinals and I'm going to have cameras here looking at the guys you're going to have cameras cameras looking at the guys putting the image in the girls bathroom out of the box thinking that's a door I remember Will looking at this video I remember reacting to the Will reacting to this video and at the time I did not understand what he was talking about and now I understand that he has built a a sex toilet where you can spy on the men peeing. But the reason why he's spying on the men peeing or he wants women to spy on the men peeing is because the only way to defeat sexual assault is by making the women, you know, sexually harass the men. That's illegal, okay? That is super illegal, what the fuck? So do you know what, Niall? We've done a lot of house tours and I've walked around a lot of these places. And Michael, you can attest to this. Some of the big modern houses, yeah. you don't feel like you could ever live there. Yeah. They, they just don't feel livable. Uh, yeah, That's cold. a good point. As opposed to this one, which does? Really? Good point. Good point, says Niall. That's why I made this fuck dungeon livable, dude. <laughs> Bro, there is no life in this, dude. My favorite part of this entire video, nothing beats it, is when he's so excited to talk about sustainability. And I thought, like, maybe they put some, like, green energy, like, recyclable shit, you know what I mean? Just to make it seem like... Make it seem like they put the effort in sustainability. And it was just plastic fucking flowers, dude. It's like, yeah, I love sustainability, which is why we got plastic flowers. <laughs> Just why? How is that sustainability, dude? What would you say is your most favorite part of the house? It's a great question. There's so many. Favorite part of the house is my ex-wife being in it. <laughs> I will tell you, I've been asked that before at a Univision interview, and it's hard to say now because I haven't given it away. But my favorite parts of this house is the house's ability to change the world. That's my favorite part. <laughs> what? It's nearly time. Wait, what does he mean by this? Is this gonna be like a sustainability argument where he turns around and, cause like you expect him to say like, I am going to house every homeless veteran in the country in my house. But instead it's just like, it's really I've sick because we're trying out this new concept called live in uh, workers, okay? So they work for free, but they work to, you know, live within the boundaries of the house. They can't leave. No, no, no. It's not like slavery. It's very different. It's like, um, okay, maybe it's a little similar to slavery, but it's like disruptive. Okay. Three showers and the Dornbrock body deluge, which is a warm slab that drenches you with different kinds of water techniques. This house is giving me anxiety and I just realized why. I fucking hate going to malls. The anxiety that I feel in mall parking lots is the reason why I hate going to malls. And this house is literally one big mall parking lot. It looks like a mall parking lot too. It's just concrete slabs everywhere. It sucks, dude. I would fucking hate it, dude. Fuck, I just wanted to take a shit. And I've gone into 11 living rooms so far trying to find the one fucking bathroom. This sucks. I'm taking a shit on the fucking hallway, dude. You would lose your fucking mind. It's like making me mad. I'm getting secondhand triggered by just looking at this dude trying to describe why he built this shit. And the beautiful living walls. Living walls, yeah. This is insanity. It's insanity. That's my favorite part yet. No, no. I'm not even like impressed anymore. I've seen so much. Bro, after you've seen the fifth fucking pool in the house, you're like, oh, there's another pool right there. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yet another pool in this house full of pools. Giving me heartburn watching this, dude. It has all techno gym equipment and a juice bar. <laughs> That's all you need to know, by the way, that like this dude has no fucking vision. There is enough space for an entire laser tag arena 
in this fucking house. And you went and you just made the fucking copy paste bullshit ass designers digest ass fucking, you know, $10,000 a pop ass modern furniture that you put in every fucking room. Instead of adding a fucking laser tag room, a uh, laser tag arena, you go into the gym. Imagine having a $500 million house and you go to the gym and it's literally like, like this is dog shit dude it's just dog shit what, what is this this is literally home gyms that like upper middle class people have in their apartments right now no weights no bench no rack it's so fucking shitty sheer size of it look down there i mean i have no idea what that is but it's literally it sad this is the to saddest grow and thing grow and grow and i love these these are brilliant yeah it's oh, brilliant. Brilliant. what what does he mean he loves those? They're brilliant. Is, he th is that art? That's not art, right? Is it art? Is this supposed to be art? I think they're like, I don't think that's art, dude. These, these are brilliant. Yeah. What, what does he mean? These are brilliant. Okay, someone, someone with like a fucking degree explain this to me. Well, oh, brilliant. Clever. Is it brilliant, brother? What's the, what the fuck? It literally looks like a placeholder, dude. Look at this. I would give this shot like that. Looks like the text oh, you just got it. didn't you load the spin. in. I'm a director, so like, <laughs> I, th th you know what I mean? Like, I, th I'm, I'm gonna be directing like two or three movies I'm writing right now. Oh my God, dude, that's so LA. Oh God, that is the most LA fucking statement, dude. I'm like directing, I'm gonna be directing like two or three movies I'm writing right now, dude. I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna be directing those, dude. This is gonna be fucking sick. I never, I, and I'll show you, you know what? I'll show you in the, I'll show you the theater. It's Where is it there? Wait, it's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard to see this because I, my ex that I met eight months ago, I married. It already, it didn't work out because she's from Argentina. She doesn't listen to me, blah, 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 blah. But it's still hard to see because we were like soulmates, like deeper connection that you could ever imagine. So it's hard oh, no! to watch the music video I directed with her, but you should see it. You know what? The theater. We should see it. Okay. So this is. Okay. Link link what's the fucking video dude come on chat we gotta do it we gotta do it it has boobies oh fuck yeah it does oh he's got hella titties in it wait what the fuck how is this on youtube bro okay which one is his wife though because this chick is wait i think i know this person what the fuck this is the oh, oh this isn't it my oh, goodness oh, look at that dude he's got a fucking full-blown bowling alley this okay that's bowling sick. alley four lane and then this okay that's fucking sick this dude. is a golf simulator Oh my God, there's so much going on. Wait, I want to see his ex-wife. Hold on, the, the, the COVID wife. Damn, she kind of seems like a normal person. This is the COVID wife, guys. The COVID wife. I didn't think it could get better. It just keeps getting better. Why? Well, like, why? No, it's not. I feel like he's lying, dude. Like, what, what do you mean it keeps getting better? It's not. It's just... It, it's just big. That's it. For this guy, for producer Michael, big equals better, dude. I mean, it's, it's very obvious. He is very easily impressed. It's just a waste of space. I want to know more about this guy and his, like, pathetic relationships. That's where the fucking real interesting stuff is. You know what I'm saying? This house fucking... Uh, all right. Yeah, whatever. It was impressive, like, three hours ago. You know what I mean? It's no longer as impressive anymore. And it's so tastefully done. Everything is so tastefully done. 100%. Yeah, no. Even I this... I mean, look at the pool table. It's literally the opposite of tasteful, dude. This is the real deal theater. Yeah, let me see if I can put the movie, music video off. Huh? Okay. Why do you need this much space if you don't have this many friends to fill it up with? Like, if you don't have half the fucking friend. friends to fill this shit up. Motherfucker, you have all the space in the, on the planet with no homies to, to bring in. You know what I mean? Want to watch my hot ex-wife dance? Sag. Bro, this is so fucking sad, dude. Okay, so now we're going to head to the guest house. I love you if you only knew. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, the lady took the photo. I can see from the frames. I don't know if that makes it sadder, though. So Apparently, Niles, Miami has gotten one third of all COVID house party citations as of November in LA. It's like living in a nightclub, billionaire LA property developer racks up a third of all pandemic house party citations in the city. As neighbors complain of massless punks who arrive on buses, blast music, and wreak havoc all night. The 52-year-old's been renting out the groups of young, wealthy social media influencers, TikTok stars, raking as much as 50k a month in rental income. Neighbors in the affected Hollywood Hills enclaves, where he owns multiple mansions, totaling reported 700 million, have expressed their outrage. One said, the little punks were sarcastic to an elderly couple walking by, then they all flipped me off for no reason. He is changing the world, dude. He's changing the world by fighting 
alongside COVID. Hassan, please click. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Can you want to see the, uh, the staff quarters? Yes, please. So this is the staff quarters. It's seven bedrooms. This is one of the sizes. This is like the bath, the area, the closet. I feel These are bad, lovely bedrooms dude. for the staff. I keep flipping back and forth, okay? I keep flipping back and forth. Like, I want to be mad at this guy for, for how fucking nasty all this shit is. Like, how fucking opulent this shit is. How crazy this shit is. But also, I just can't help but feel sad. I feel like it's going to change now, okay? The sadness is probably going to change now that I know what the slave quarters look like. Let's take a look. Quarters. Yeah, great views. Beautiful bathrooms. Then here's wait, all of it here because it comes straight down. So wait, staff, wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. What? Quarters, staff. Staff. Show me one of the rooms, motherfucker. Staff. This is the room, bro? Staff. The area of the closet. This is the room? I gotta say something. I think rich people, I think rich people don't realize like the disdain that people under them feel towards them, right? If you make motherfuckers live in a Motel 6 ass room while you're like above living in that royalty fucking mansion that's lavish as fuck. They are going to want to murder you. These are lovely bedrooms for staff quarters. Yeah. Oh, producer Michael, these are lovely bedrooms for staff quarters. I mean, normally in, you know, in my castle uh, in, in the UK, they live in filth. They live in the fucking barn. So they have everything. They have a living room, a kitchen, a laundry, all the bedrooms. You could fit like four staff in each room if you wanted to, like, and, and they could be totally comfortable. No, dude. No, he did not just... What the fuck, dude? These people are crazy, bro. You can fit like four staff in each room? Hey, you fucking slaves. Here is your dormitory kitchen with one, micro, uh, one microwave to like all 27 of you living in this like little cubby that is the size of one of my closets. Like there are closets upstairs that are larger than this entire living quarters that they've allocated to the staff. I don't understand why people would not recognize. You gotta be so... So deeply removed from the anger and frustration that people would feel against you. Like you have to be so out of touch. It's honestly respectable how out of touch you are to think that people would not absolutely fucking despise you and want to murder you if they worked here. God damn, dude. Yeah, this also makes it extra funny because he was talking about how like him and his ex-wife are going to fucking, I don't know, like teach kids how to act or something by giving rich people blown glass. That puts things into yet, a, yet another interesting perspective. We just had the most epic, epic house tour in the history. Motherfucker changed outfits, dude. I mean, this is like, this has been a multiple day event. You know what I mean? Producer Michael, I've changed my outfit. You know, it's fucking Michael Caine. In the last video, I asked you, what is the best part about this house? In fact, I think it was Adam even that asked you that question. And you said something like, what we can do with the house. Mm -hmm. What did you mean? Tell everybody. Well, I think that I have something very, very this exciting. And I believe that blankets and I don't have house. this by chance. I believe that I was always meant to be able to create this house. When we first tried to pull a permit for this house, the plan checker made a mistake and approved it for larger than it should be in the beginning. And then they changed all the rules, making it absolutely impossible to build this house. Again, really, really the one is fitting for this. And the house is called The One Bel Air and my show is called The One. And between those two, I think that we have the ability to really change the world in a very positive way. Um, when you say change the world in a positive way, how does this house change the world. I, 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 I need I, to explain I, that. I will explain. So because of COVID, all of the- <laughs> dude, dude, this is so stupid, dude. Yo, why can't rich people just be like, dude, I'm rich. I'm very fortunate. You know, a lot of people aren't. I'm just going to live my life. Why is it always like a divine mission? Just be rich, dude. They have to be like, I'm on a divine mission from Allah to change the world <laughs> with my insanely expensive house. <laughs> the venues around the world have been either shut down or dramatically altered. There is nowhere in the world really where you can go for a venue like you used to have. A big boxing match or the Academy Awards or 
the Grammys or anything else that required a large crowd to gather at Staples Center or MGM or Caesars Palace or any of these other places. But we have it now because this house has the ability to hold 900 people in a safe COVID environment. And what is being- Bro, that's so funny that this guy literally is a responsible personally for a third of all pandemic house party citations in the city. That makes this so much funnier, dude. Guys, I have a mission. I'm on a mission. I want to give every rich person COVID, okay? You don't understand. Guys, I am a, a Marxist, Leninist, revolutionary. I am on a mission from Vladimir Ilyich Lenin to give COVID to every wealthy person. What is this? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. This guy is so good, dude. Created for this house is a show that is a show that everyone will want to watch and identify with because it stars me. I live in the house and I live in the house with people that I love and we do crazy things and have crazy parties, but we also help the world in so many different ways. And one of the- By what, throwing Oscars parties, dude? What the fuck? Yo, this is so sick, dude. Yo, I want to live with this guy in this house. I want to change the world by throwing a boxing match in my incredibly massive house that the bank is foreclosed on. Bro, even producer Michael's like, uh, you fucking, bro, you, you, you're a little delusional there, bro. I don't fucking know. I believe doing events in this house through a show that everyone will want to watch. That will fuel the publicity for the pay-per-view, making it even bigger. And when money comes down like that, I'm going to go into the city. And I'm going to go into East LA and Beverly Hills. And I'm going to make people's dreams come true. Because I'm going to see and read people and anyone that's good that has a real idea that they've never had the chance. I'm going to give them a three-page contract. And I'm going to put all of the responsibility on them to report back to me. And that exact day without lawyers, I'm going to write how much I own of their company and I'm going to write them a check and give it to them. And I will only be able to do it with pay-per-view that comes to us. And with that, the whole entire world will change. And I really believe that the world needs this house. Let, let me just interrupt you. What? Motherfuckers be like meritocracy is a, is a real thing. <laughs> Yo, people believe rich people deserve it, dude. It's so dumb. <laughs> oh, this guy's crazy, dude. It's like, I'm gonna have Shark Tank, but with no legal contracts. <laughs> and it only works if there's a pay-per-view. <laughs> so stupid, dude. Oh, I haven't laughed as much since COVID started, I think. He is changing the world, dude. This is the most I've laughed since COVID started, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Three page contract. The funniest Thank part you. about this isn't yeah, like the delusional cocaine down. rants, okay? Let me tell you something. The funniest part about this, it's a direct fucking attack on the banking industry in its entirety, is the fact that he got $84 million from a bank to be able to make this house. A guy like this was able to literally fucking get $84 million from a bank. Like there are analysts and, and, and entire teams of people that are like, that went to some of the top universities and are now working at a bank and they were fucking got. For the past three years, I am the biggest developer in Los Angeles and I have the best houses. I couldn't sell one house. Two years before COVID, I couldn't sell a house. Then COVID came, I couldn't sell a house. Until finally the point, I ran out of money. And I have a chapter 11 on one of the houses I live in. And this house, I was just notified, has a notice of default placed against it. But I am 100. What the fuck? What? Oh no. Oh no, he's just, uh-oh, uh-oh. Why is he saying this on camera? but they are gonna give the ability to make an unbelievable show, probably the best television show that's ever been. As buff. And the best events, better than they ever were before COVID. And the most important thing, 
We are going to teach the world about sustainability through my show, through. Wait, he's going to teach the world about sustainability? <laughs> Does he? With what the plastic flowers, dude? I'm so glad that there is no waste in capitalism. The most efficient system that's ever been created. There is no other way to re-examine or reimagine organizing the economy. But we're also going to do things like the new technology of televisions that, that snap together. We're going to create virtual shark tanks where we talk about how we don't need to take. We're going to make my wife uh, into a hologram and she's never going to leave me. My bitch ex-wife is going to be in the house with me in every room. It's going to be fucking the sick. Ocean. We are the world 2022, and I'm going to have podiums set up throughout this entire house, and we are going to do a modern-day remix of We Are the World, and I am going to have the biggest entertainment entertainers Keep ever the in the history game. singing on each podium, but I'm also going to have people like <laughs> Chimela Sahoutin, <clears throat> my current... This is so bad! Oh, dude, he's he's like final. His his um grand vision is a build up to recreating. We are the world, dude. Each podium, but I'm also gonna have people like Chamila Sout, <clears throat> my current wife, who it didn't work out, but we're getting a divorce. Was an unbelievable singer that she is gonna be on the podium singing next to the biggest singers in the world. But you know who else is gonna be singing next to them? Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson, and Prince, and Elvis Presley, because every single one of these singers. Oh my God, this is fucking, this is tasty, dude. This is the worst React video I've ever watched. Like it's the best React video I've ever watched. Therefore the worst one I've ever watched, I think in my entire life. She is more gone than the celebrities who you are going to turn into holograms and, uh, and, and do concerts with, okay? She's more gone than the fucking house. Every penny is gonna go to help everybody else. That's absolutely amazing. That's truly, truly amazing. Yeah. Dude, this is so stupid, dude. It is going to make so much money based on what other pay-per-view events have done that even if my three boxing events make 80 to 100 million dollars in total, which is absolutely the which happens to be exactly the amount of money that I need to pay off to the bank, which is, you know, unrelated to the conversation, but you know, somewhere in the 82 million to $110 million range, which happens to be the exact amount that I need to pay to the bank. Otherwise they're going to take my fucking house away from me. We will be fine. <laughs> What if you have three billion? You could never spend that money. Well, I have a friend who has three billion dollars. And when I was in my house looking up at the sky saying I didn't have the money to buy a cheeseburger, he wouldn't help me. And I decided right then that's never going to happen to anybody that I see that I trust that's a good person. That will never happen. What the f Fuck. What the fuck, bro? That's not your friend, homie. Oh, that's so sad, dude. Why did they? Oh, this was a masterpiece, dude. Just remember, this motherfucker's like mad so at a billionaire for not buying him a cheeseburger truck. when he had no money, I guess. But like, he put slave quarters in his fucking house. And he's like, yeah, we'll stack them four at a time in those rooms. I'm just saying. Like, so I don't feel that sad about this dude. The words, you know what I mean? I mean, so exciting. I, I mean, you. so I had no idea what you were going to say, but this yeah. is so exciting. There, there's so um, much more to come. This is just like the, the pin. Thank you for everything. You're Niall. welcome. And I want to say one other thing. I have two terrific boys, Bryce and Brent. And I feel bad. Brent is not graduated. Bryce is graduating, but they don't know really what to do in their life. And they're like a lot of other teens. Just to give you an idea of one thing that we're gonna do, they are unbelievable artists. And I already told them, start doing the best art you can, your sculptures, your paintings, whatever it is, and we're gonna put it in this house along five, 10, 20 million dollar pieces. And with that, we're gonna open an art gallery for teens down the street, and you'll be able to go and help teens realize their dreams. And not just my two kids, that's so sad, dude. That that shit's I just want my fucking money. sad, no, dude. I feel bad well, about that. Who, whatever teens are great artists. There's so many things that's we can brilliant. do in the world. That's there's so brilliant. So many things. That's amazing. That's there's amazing. So, there's so many the things. world needs that. The, the, the world, world needs, needs that. The one. The world needs the one, and the world needs these events because the world 
needs a new champion. Yeah, bro. There's literally not enough fucking uh, event spaces in the world. Like, I'm glad that I'm glad that the world needs that, dude. Remember. I don't know how the fuck you work yourself up into a delusion, like a delusional state like this. You know what I mean? Suggestion only. Executive producer Mark Burnett in negotiations suggested artwork only. This is like not even real. Yo, this dude just straight up went to a digital rendering of possible events. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I don't think people real like this dude is, has he never thrown an event? Like, I, I don't understand. The world needs the one and the world needs these events because the world needs a new champion. The world needs somebody positive. The world needs somebody that cares about them. And that's me. Well, I, I think everybody watching this will know just by watching you how genuine you really are. Yeah, genuinely delusional, dude. What the fuck? I really hope that there is an event that they're throwing. I'm going to ask some of my promoter friends to see if there's like something going on here so I can potentially go to this, go to one of these things straight up. I will try to go and I will try to stream it. Okay. You bet your fucking ass. Do you understand? Bro, these houses feel so weird yeah. now. Yeah, dude. Imagine, imagine normal streamer houses after fucking watching the one dude. It's your fault. What is this? Hassan fucking some Argentinian woman, $500 million mansion with two colors. <laughs> Shut the fuck up.